Hi, it's Professor Zygmunt with CTS 560 Online. I'd like to show you how to use Gauss View to construct uh, some of the different benzene isomer candidates that you're asked to investigate in problem 3.2 in this week's assignment. So if we look at the assignment, I want to focus on how to try to build candidate number two. And you'll note that these uh, skeletal structures uh, indicate the carbon atoms, the six carbon atoms as vertices, and then the carbon atoms are connected to their neighboring carbon atoms either by single bonds or double bonds. You also have to realize that in the structures two through five, they generally will not be planar structures the way that structure number one, the benzene ring is. So let's go to run Gauss view. on node N0. And begin by using the ring fragment tool. We're going to build a new structure. And since all of these structures that you're asked to investigate are isomers of benzene, let's start with benzene itself. Now, if we choose the ring fragment tool and then click on the name of the fragment, we get the entire menu. And while in structure number five for this week's assignment, you might want to look at the cyclopropane uh, molecule because that structure, number five, is actually a combination of two cyclopropane rings. Uh, for now, let's just stick with benzene because structure two is going to look a lot like the standard benzene ring with a little bit of twisting and alteration of bond lengths and bond angles. All right, so first let me display the uh, atom numbers so that we can talk about the different atoms involved. And then I'll recenter the uh, molecule within the builder window. Now, for just a moment, if we go back to the assignment, we see that two sets of carbon-carbon atoms are going to be connected by double bonds, which are shorter. The rest of them all connected by single bonds. And in particular, there's a new connection between two of the carbon atoms that appear to sit the furthest apart. Uh, but that's really just an artifact of this uh, shorthand structural notation. So what we'd like to do is make, uh, for example, the bond between 4 and 5. We're going to go and use the Modify Bond tool and click on 4 and 5 and make that a single bond. And we know that that is roughly 1.54 angstroms. And so if I set that and click OK, uh, that has been lengthened. Oh, I did forget one thing, though. Let's go back and change that in order to change the bond type to a single bond. So it will show up the way that we want in this display window. Now I'll do the same thing for the connection between atom 4 and atom 3. We'll make it a single bond. We'll change the distance to 1.54 indicative of a single carbon-carbon bond. You'll note what happens, though, is that doing that actually shortens the bond between 4 and 5 a little bit. So if we go through this process a couple of times, we actually get to the point where both of those bonds are about 1.54 angstroms. And then we can say we're pretty much done. Now let's do the same thing with atom 1 and atom 6 because we also want that to be a single bond with about the same bond length. So we click OK. We do the same thing with 1 and 2. Very quickly, you can see, once you get the hang of this, it, it's something that you can do very quickly. One more time, we'll do another iteration in order to make sure that these bond lengths are about right for a single carbon-carbon bond. And now we've got something that looks a little bit more like the structure number two. Except what we have to do now is we've got to shorten the double bonds. And that's easy enough to do. Let's say with five and six, we're still using the bond tool. We're going to make that a double bond. I'm actually going to move both of them. So translate the, uh, the group for both of them. And we'll shorten that to 1.34 angstroms. And we'll do the same thing with 3 and 2. 
double bond 1.34 angstroms. And now we're looking even closer uh, to what the original structure is. But the little puzzle is how can we connect the vertical, the, the atoms at the top and the bottom? And the only way that we can really build a single bond between those involves uh, some rotation or some uh, twisting of this structure out of the planar configuration. So I actually want to make a bond between atom 4 and atom 1. The only way to do that is to make 4 and 1 come up out of the plane that the molecule is in right now and then bring them closer together. So I'll just show you how to do this um, so that you can get some ideas on how to start this assignment. I'm going to use the modified dihedral tool. And so here's the way it works. I'm going to take atom 4 and rotate it around the axis formed by atoms 5 and 6 and fix the fourth atom. And we're going to rotate it up maybe about 30 degrees away from where it was initially. So I click OK for that. Now I'm going to do the same thing in order to make it more symmetrical in the way that this twisting action works. I'm going to now change this so it's pretty close to being a symmetrical rotation. You see how that works now? Uh, atom number four is up out of the plane and I want to do the same thing with atom number one. So I use the modify dihedral angle tool again and some of, some of this you can just do by eye. Whoops, that's the wrong direction there because I want it to rotate upward. So maybe about to there. I'll say that's good enough, and then we'll do the same trick with one, two, three, and four. We'll make, oops, wrong way. We'll buckle it up like this. Okay, click OK. And now if I rotate the molecule, I see that I've got it into a pretty close arrangement to what I was looking for, except I really now want a bond between atom four and atom one. So I need to go to the Modify Bond tool, click on that, go back to the window, and I want to pull atoms 1 and 4 closer together. I want there to be a single bond between them. And I want it to be something short enough so that maybe it's representative of a single bond, maybe somewhere around 1.5 angstroms. So I'll bring it in. Well, I guess we said 1.54. So we'll do that. I click OK. And now we see something that is uh, the real ball and stick molecular model that corresponds to this structure number two, or something very close to it. Now there's one more tool before saving this as a, an input file and running a geometry optimization calculation. I can use the little paintbrush tool in Gauss View that's called Clean. And what Clean does is it will take a structure like this one that we've obviously bent and twisted and it will try to make the angles and bond lengths a little bit more realistic based on some simple models, uh, some simple rules that the program uses. So if I click this, what will happen is the molecule changes and now looks like this. Now the only thing about it that I notice is that the hydrogen atom number 10 is pointed upward, number 7 now is pointed downward. And I don't know, I'm not really certain, that doesn't look quite right to me. So let me take atom 7, and by using once again a dihedral angle adjustment, we're going to change this from 180 to about 0, so that those atoms are roughly in uh, the same place above the plane. All right, so now that looks a little bit more realistic to me. Uh, let's assume, I'll click the clean again and see what that does. Ah, now look at this. That actually makes things a little bit more symmetrical. That was a little bit more like I was thinking it would look like. And so from this point, we can go on to use uh, calculate a Gaussian and then save the job using whatever specifications I want to. In this case, we're going to use the job type of an optimization plus a frequency calculation, and so on and so forth. So that's how to use Gauss View. 
uh, to make some distortions, to change some bond lengths and some bond angles in order to build a structure like structure number two. So see if you can do the same thing with three and four and five in order to complete this week's assignment.